Hello to the wonderful Dynamics 360 fan Power Platform community. Today we are going to talk about Dynamics 365 Power Mantra Volume 12 in conversation with Matt from UK as a senior consultant there, who is doing a series called as MS Flow Ember. So all throughout November, Matt is actually going and creating videos on Power Automate or formerly called Microsoft Flow. This is also for a cause, this is for a charity. So if you review the videos for, from Matt, which are the series are in the description below, it will help Matt raise some funds and he will donate it to a charity. So let's quickly get into the conversation with Matt. Good morning to you, Matt, and we are going to talk about your Dynamics 365 Power Platform experiences and also your series MS Flow Ember. So can you start with a brief introduction for yourself and you can mention your social media links as well? Sure. Uh, so I'm Matt Collins Jones. Um, I'm here to talk about my new Power Automate series called MS Flow Ember. Uh, it's a series where I take um, the basics of um, what used to be called Microsoft Flow, now called Power Automate, and teach people in a very sort of short um, time frame how to use the basics. Um, so it was a way that I could learn um, more about Power Automate, but also help the community and help them uh, learn stuff about Power Automate. Um, you, can find, you can find my blog on uh, d365geek.co.uk. You can also follow me on Twitter at d365geek. You guys, you can see the social media links in the video as well, right? So you can always follow Matt from there. He's doing some lot of interesting work with Power Automate. Thank you, Matt, for uh, sharing your about your series, what you're doing with Power Automate. Can you also throw some light on what an average day for at work looks like for you at this stage of your career? Yeah, sure. Um, so what? I usually start with is um, getting up um, around about like half eight, start work at nine, um, checking emails, things like that, checking teams to see if there's been any good announcements overnight. We have a daily call with our, um, our CE team, which encompasses like telling everyone what people are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of like a daily scrum call. Um, then it kind of moves usually on to sort of project work. So this could be a call with the customer to gather some requirements. It could be a, a, a demo um, of something that I've already built. Or my favorite days is when I can just get into building something. Um, I, I really like to build things. So like whenever I get a chance to just build things is like when I'm in my sort of happy place. Yeah. So you are, you are my best buddy there. So whenever we get to do the hands on, right? Hands on is really our our thing. So yeah, well, it's it's pretty interesting that most of the people who are involved with community and power platform and uh, dynamics at this stage they really love the hands on stuff and spending time with the technology to do the demonstration. Yeah. So great. Thank you for telling about your average day at work. So if anybody is looking to do something around consulting or growing your career there, that's what your average day is going to look like, right? Yeah. And wh what's been your journey like? What are the other job titles you have had on your way on all over to your current role at TST? So my um, my previous job role, uh, I used to work for a, um, it was kind of like an IT company. It was, um, we did um, RFID technology, so kind of uh, taking books from libraries to a kiosk, um, sort of self-serve, uh, and then they can take the books away. Um, mm -hmm. I was working on the help desk there, so it was a case of troubleshooting, uh, diagnosing problems, um, analyzing the software, seeing what was going wrong, um, sending engineers out to site. And in the background to that, uh, our internal system that we used for sort of um, customer relationship management was Dynamics CRM. And cool. my company at the time didn't have any sort of support contract for it or any consultancy firm for it. Okay. And it was it was kind of a case of, well, you went to university, you kind of know, you know, about computers and about databases and stuff. <laughs> Why don't you just do it? So um, after about um, four or five years of doing it in my own time, uh, learning it. So kind of trying to figure out how solutions work, trying to figure out how customizations, how workflows work and all that sort of stuff. Um, I eventually realized that there was actually a career in this, which I didn't realize. 
So at that point, I made the jump and I thought, you know what, I want to do this full time. Like it's it's something that excites me. It's something that I want to do. Uh -huh. So I I made the jump over to um, to my current company, TSG, um, and I started working on the sport desk there. Um, yeah. And in the in the first six months of working on the sport desk, I learned more than I did in the past four years. Okay. Um, and now I'm trying to become a, a senior D365C consultant where I can use those original skills of like building and modeling data and mm. build customer systems and train customers and do all yeah. that fun stuff. It's, it's kind of interesting the comment you say that six months uh, in a support desk and an implementation partner or a consulting partner makes you learn way more. I mean, I have had a similar experience. I was uh, with internal IT for a good uh, close to two years. And yeah, learning was just getting limited. I was just doing whatever is within that scope of the business, right? And here you go to a support desk and you have to do so much more. You have oh, multiple, yeah. things, multiple <laughs> scenarios to handle. So yeah, uh, I, I get what you use. Uh, all right. So, and, then then you learned a lot in six months now the, the next question is about learning itself and many okay. people ask this and one of the things with power mantra is for people to be able to use other people's experiences who are experts now in this tech yeah. how do you keep up to date with the ever increasing uh, dynamics 365 apps and also power platform now i also want to add there like is that is there some magic or like how how do you get up up to speed with it all the time yeah there's no there's no real magic there's no magic button um i'm afraid uh, and i think it's it's difficult as well that when you come in and you start doing ce or crm that um now it's you no longer need to know just that you have to understand power apps to a certain extent you have to understand um, power automate to a certain extent and the whole power platform so you mm -hmm. went from learning one product really well to having to learn like a whole platform of products uh, reasonably well um so it is difficult uh, what i found really useful are things like uh, blog articles so especially back in when i was first looking at CRM like 2011, 2013, I didn't realize that there was a community out there. So I'd find random blog articles from people that solved the problems. So those are always quite helpful. Um, now we do have this, I now realize that we have this amazing power, power apps community, power platform community, D365 community, um, and they are a great resource. So going to um, user groups, going to things like um, Summit, going to things like Focus, Dynamics Communities, led events where mm -hmm. presentations are delivered by experts. You you see a lot of um, things that you wouldn't normally see in your day to day job and you can understand these concepts and start learning them. Mm -hmm. um, for me, most of my Twitter feed is now filled with like Dynamics news. So in a lot of my spare time, I'm still kind of reading and still absorbing. Um, one, of, one of the things I think is really good as well is um, just getting your hands on it like you know we kind of talked in the beginning about getting your hands on a product and starting to learn it like that's what I'm doing with Power Automate is like I'm just going right what is this very basic thing let's learn how that all works and let's teach people how it all works so community blogs videos vlogs um, right. you know webinars dynamics communities any sort of like UGs any sort of meetups you can get to Okay. Talking to people is really important as well. So, uh, but yeah, there's there's so much out there, but it's it's a constant learning learning path. Right. I, yeah, I, I I get you. And talking to people, like I'll I'll really like to iterate on that point. Sometimes we might spend like uh, days trying to solve the same problem, and it just takes a yeah. call or an email to somebody who has just recently done it or who has spent those days already. So. It makes sense to just get a viewpoint, right? Like and oh, utilize yeah. what somebody already learned. And that's where community is really important. Yeah. Right. So yeah, there's no magic, guys. Even as Matt said, like we have to go and keep learning, keep updating. I'm an avid reader myself. I go to all these user groups. I do attend a lot of things. Uh, we we both recently attended D365 Focus and uh, got a lot out of it as well. Like right? there were a lot of interesting perspectives to take take back from. Yeah. And yeah, if you are trying to learn Power Automate, again, I'm going to point directly to Matt series. Once number is done, that's going to be a full Wikipedia of uh, whatever you can learn on Power Automate. I think that's what Matt has told me. This is going to be everything that you can do with Power Automate. So this is going to be my 
refresher for whatever I know as well as whatever I could wish to know. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, go ahead. So as I say, so the, the, the current event I'm running, MS Flow November, I'm releasing a single video every single day in November. Um, so we're on, uh, I think we're around middle of November now. So I've got a bunch of videos out already. Um, then Microsoft decided to change the, the marketing and added a new type of flow. So I've actually included a bonus video on top of the 30 videos I was already uh, going to publish this month. Um, so yeah, it's just trying to cover everything and I'll keep going so as well. So I will I will also like to iterate. I, I really appreciate what you're doing for the Power Platform community, especially with Power Automate with the series. Can you can you just give a brief on how much it takes to do this videos? Because sometimes while we are going through those videos or we are actually uh, just reading something, we do not realize how much it takes, right? So I am always trying to get up that point as well. Like how much time you have invested of your <laughs> personal time? Because this is not going to come from your day job, right? No, so no, it doesn't. How much, how much time you have invested in getting this series going? Uh, quite a bit. Um, I, I, I don't have a number, but um, the first thing I had to do is I had to learn it. So um, so obviously there's resources like docs.microsoft.com that help you with things, but um, because Power Automate is kind of like a, a, a sort of a parallel program to Logic Apps, what I've actually found as I've been trying to learn these things and learn these tools is that the documentation doesn't exist on the Power App side of it, on the, sorry, the Power, mm -hmm. Power Automate side of it, on the mm -hmm. what was previously Flow. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I've had to try and figure things out. When I've really gotten stuck, I've had to keep searching and eventually found that the documentation exists on Logic Apps, but mm -hmm. not on Power Automate, which is kind of annoying. So mm -hmm. I've spent like hours trying to figure out like how does this HTTP webhook work and how does it relate <laughs> back and how do I use right. this and how do I use that? So there was a lot of prep work gone into it. So although the videos are very bite-sized to help people mm -hmm. consume mm -hmm. content easier, um, mm -hmm. they're anyway between sort of two to eight minutes um mm. the actual you know to, to prep for that video to learn how it works to do all the tests and all the functionality mm. it's probably taken sort of anywhere to like half an hour to three hours to like understand it first so mm. it is quite an investment to do as I said like a five minute video mm. where you see those five minutes but it's actually you know a few hours of my life that's gone to understand it so i can then relate that to you so what is the Prior to this one, what is the best tool or solution you have used on Dynamics 365 or Power Platform on your journey? Um, I'm going to maybe cheat a little bit. I'm going to use a community tool. Um, so I'm going to say the XRM toolbox, but specifically the Fetch XML Builder by Jonas Rapp. Um, it's a fantastic tool for building mm. your Fetch XML stuff, um, your reports, your, your um, queries and things like that. Um, but the reason I love it so much is that you can build fetch, you can put a fetch XML query into it, and then he's added in a button that allows you to get the flow parameters or the mm -hmm. Power Automate parameters. Right. So you can click the button and it'll generate you an OData query because I right. don't know or understand OData um, like off by heart. Um, right. He um, he put this, like Jonas put this in, so um, you can use the sort of fetch, create a view, create an advanced find in Dynamics, transfer that to the fetch XML builder and then press a button and you have all your flow parameters. It's fantastic, it can save me so much time. It is awesome. It is fantastic. We are. I'll tell you why. I lived in a time when we had to actually build those OData queries in <laughs> CRM. That and yeah. there were no tools yet published. And this is the time of OData. No, when we are not even talking Web API, when we returned it to Web API, and <laughs> some of the documentation will be there. But I will tell you one example. There used to be this logical operators and and or right. Initially, yeah. when CRM 2011 came around and we are trying to build those queries and it, initial documentation didn't have that say that you can do those and and or queries and you really need to go to the URL, try your permutations and combinations and if it works out, grand. <laughs> then you go back and uh, put a debugger on and you try to find how the array is coming in. And we live in a lot better times now. So yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorite tools as well, especially I use it for really advanced aggregate queries as well. So sharing a trade secret there, both of us. <laughs> So what do, what do you think about the Dynamics 365 certifications? How how important are certifications in the industry? And have you done any recently? 
So uh, I I think they are important. Um, I have done 11 in the last four years. Um, so I've kind of, I started on my journey um, back 2015 customization. Um, then the day I passed the 2015 customization, they, did, they released the 2016 one. <laughs> so I kind of immediately went and did that one. Um, and then I've done a, a series of them over the last uh, four years. Um, I did a, a talk um, at summit in um, Amsterdam earlier this year on certifications. Um, I think they're good from several perspectives. So um, it's good on a CV when you're looking for a new job um, because people can see that you clearly demonstrate and understand those skills. Right. Um, I also think it's good from a, from a self-learning perspective. So you go off and you um, have to learn something or learn an aspect of the system that may be tested on that you may not know before. So um, the, the example I always use is things like goals in Dynamics. Um, goals are used in Dynamics to kind of like um, set targets for people and set targets for teams. But I'd never used them before because I'd never had a project or a customer that needed mm -hmm. them. So I had to go away and try to understand these. And I think I'm a better consultant for it that I can, um, you know, understand these concepts, understand these things. So I think they're kind of important from that perspective. Uh, I am having a slight problem at the moment because I've just got married and I've changed my name to take okay. sort of we, me and my wife are double barrel in our names okay. um, and I'm struggling to take an exam because my name keeps showing up as my old name and all my IDs under my new name. So, so I'm still going to work that out with Microsoft and hopefully it'll be resolved quickly yeah, um, because there's a few new exams coming out. That's so. interesting. Congratulations on getting Thank married you. and joining the club. <laughs> so. The thing about certifications, they are important, especially I find that all the certifications which are with to do with Power Platform related things now or the latest yeah. customer engagement ones, they are way more practical and uh, oriented towards the job and role, right? Yeah. I didn't find that happening earlier. Like we used to have one applications exam, one extending exam, and it used to be you, you could be asked all the modules within that, and now you have dedicated one for each module. So it's quite good. So yeah, I I, I, under, I agree to the comment you make about certifications. They are very le relevant to the industry and can be differentiated on a job role for sure. Yeah. How often do you need to travel within UK or within Europe at this moment as a Dynamics 365 Power Platform Senior Consultant? Uh, I think I'm quite lucky in my job role. Um, like obviously we're talking over teams. I'm in the UK. Um, you're probably in India right now. Um, so the the cloud computing is trying to save me a lot of travel. So a lot of our customers are very tech savvy. We do a lot of things over teams and things like that. Um, mm. I, I So I did just fly up to Edinburgh. So um, I'd usually say maybe one to two uh, days a week across three to four weeks. Um, but I have gone periods of like three months without having to travel to a customer site. Um, so I'm quite lucky in that respect. Um, I also am home based as well. So occasionally I'll travel to one of our regional offices to have a team meeting and things like that. But again, we all have teams. So it's kind of, it's very much a, um, usually at my sort of prerogative. So start of a project, end of a project, maybe somewhere in the middle, um, but not not too bad. Um, and inside Europe is more uh, more when I want to go speak at an event or go to an event. So um, something in Amsterdam, we went to Brussels um, like a, couple, uh, about a month or so ago now. So, uh, but yeah, not, not that often for me. I'm not that lucky with travel. <laughs> I have to travel a lot and to different parts and different times like it's it's not that lucky, but yeah, I do enjoy traveling at this moment, so it's fine. Yeah. But it it totally depends. Again, yeah, it's the current rule. I, I when I was in uh, uh, Ireland, there was travel. There is travel whenever you are doing anything in North America or Middle East or anywhere, any part of the yeah. world. Yeah, but, but but that's fine. I think I am happy to hear from you that. Uh, even the customers are getting mature to use the cloud, right, for yeah. their consultant because it, at the end of the day, it saves cost, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a very cost effective way of doing delivery. Can you see yourself not using Dynamics 365 or, and Power Automate in the future, near future? Uh, no, um, I, I definitely think this is my career. Um, 
when I left my old company, um, my boss was the one that actually encouraged me to leave. He said, you know, you are wasted here. Um, you can do so much more going somewhere else and doing something that you love. And um, he called me up about a year or two after I left and he told me that um, the company were asking whether I would come back to take on sort of like like a, a slight promotion from my old role. And he just kind of told them no. He's like, he's happy leave him don't give him that choice just let him let him be happy and it, it's right you know i i'm seriously passionate about this community and this technology i i wake up every day enjoying the idea of what i'm coming to work to do um like i love building things i love teaching people i love training um i, I love technology so i don't i think this is me now i think this is my career uh and i think it's gonna be hard to try and get me out of it right yeah, great. I I think you you had a great boss. That's good to hear as well, uh, Matt. I think we'll uh, we I, we are going to have a very great addition to our Microsoft community. You already are contributing, but this is going to continue for years. Your thought on Power Automate versus Workflow Debate? I, I mean, you can spend hours talking about this, but I mean, I will. I'm just looking for the summarized top three things of. Microsoft Flow or Power Automate versus workflows in the customer engagement side. Yeah. So um, the 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 sort of differentiation thing really is um, flow, power, power Automate flows. You can do so much more than you can in workflows. Um, you can do things like replace certain plugin functionality. You can connect to different data sources. You can, um, you know, loop through records. You can like do all sorts that you just can't do with workflows. Um, they're now trying to bridge that parity gap as well. So um, the things that you couldn't do in in Power Automate, you now can do. Things like calling custom actions or calling actions um, from Dynamics or from the CDS, you can now do that in in Flow in Power Automate flows. So I think the question really is, why wouldn't you be using flow or power automate right now um is is the big thing is like yes it, it is a bit more of a um you, you need to understand the developer mindset um and need to understand some common practices but it's a tool that's designed for users it's for those citizen developers those power users that can understand logical things which is what kind of workflows were as well it wasn't for your end users it was for the power users for the system administrators and, and Power Automate is just that next continuation of that. Um, so I definitely think you should be using Power Automate just because you have so much more power um, just alone. So. so use Power Automate for so much power. That's the mantra for today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I completely agree because I'll, I'll be very honest. I initially was using workflows because you you are you get into your comfort zone like i've been using it for seven or eight years at this stage right and it was always meant for as a tool for power users but what i think power automate is is a workflow for everything i i yeah. say that it's a workflow to everything so just why not use a workflow for everything again just using a workflow for one product right so it's it's just that notion it has so much more you have tons of things coming in as well and of I course Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go I was going to say, I, I made a commitment that uh, other than working for on premise customers, I was no longer going to build any classic workflows. Um, so I, I recently was doing a uh, proof of concept for a customer um, and I was building all the automation with Power Automate. And I came up to a problem that I was just like, do you know what? This would take me five minutes to understand and do in a classic workflow, but right. I'm never going to learn, I'm never going to grow if I just revert back at the first sign of problem. So I spent half an hour, figured it all out, and it's much better. It's a much better product. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take you to through two examples that I compared in my head recently. So there, you, there was a, a quote notification which I did back in 2011 and quotes, the original cycle has not changed, but it is still much the same which we had at that time. So to notify the customer, we'll have to send an email or a SMS. We could not really notify the app right and here we are with the power of power automate i recently saw my implementation few weeks back and we are able to notify the customer right in their app now right like yeah. they have a power app and as soon as the quote is selected to 
uh, revised state, the sales guy is just notified right in the app. So it's really strong, right? So one example yeah. of how much more you can do looping, you talk about integrations to so many other things. And if you, yeah. even if you have a on-premise system and if you want to be able to make a custom connector and then hook it in, there is so yeah. much more you can do with the Power Automate. Definitely. Right, so now moving a bit uh, away from uh, Power Automate for a while. So what are your favorite, uh, favorite things to do or hobbies apart from your work? So any hobbies, how do you get de-stressed? Yeah, so uh, I'm an avid computer gamer. Um, so I'm um, being a Microsoft guy. I'm obviously a uh, an Xbox gamer. Okay. Um, my uh, my wife is a PlayStation gamer. Um, okay. So there's no rivalry. It's all like best consoles <laughs> for the best job. Um, but we do have uh, we have two TVs set up right next to each other in the living room. Um, two 50 inch uh, TVs uh, next to each other, so we can both play games at the same time. Um, I'm also a big lover of movies, so uh, love to go to the cinema, love to catch the new releases. I'm still trying to see Terminator at the moment, but I've just not had a chance mm -hmm. to yet. Um, again, with like travel and things like that, you, it's, it is difficult. You would only like it if you really like the Terminator series. So I, I, I like the Terminator original series, so I, I ended up liking it against the reviews, definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Terminator 3, <laughs> which is not one of the better ones, but I still really enjoy it. So my favorite um, is Terminator 2. Yeah, two. Oh, such a good one. Yeah. Okay, so apart from this, so you like movies, you like gaming, and of course, um, community makes you do travel as well a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Community. Um, it, it's it's such a nice feeling to be accepted for just having a common interest. And it's one thing about this community is that it's just so um, all encompassing. It's like, oh, you do power apps or you do power automate, or you do dynamics or you do SharePoint. It's like, yeah, let's, let's all get together. Let's have a drink. Let's have some food and let's have some fun. Right. That, that's what it's great about the Dynamics and Power Platform community and overall Microsoft community in general. It's very warm, right? You are very yeah. much accepted as soon as you start sharing knowledge and going to sessions. And I mean, I I, I, I take it as a personal hobby as well at this stage. It is yeah. part of the, you know, things that help helps me relax at the same stage. Right. So, what? Uh, who was the first uh, Dynamics 365 expert that you ever remember following, or Dynamics expert, or Power Platform expert? So, um, I'm not. I don't know whether you'll know him, but there's a guy called Adam Vero. Um, he was. Uh, he was an MVP um, in the UK. Um, yeah. um, uh, and also an MCT as well. I think he was a certified trainer. Um, TSG, my company, had brought him in to do um, some training um, on one of the latest certificates. The mm -hmm. um, I think it was the 2015 customization exam. Mm -hmm. um, so he came in, and it, it was instantly one of those things of I had all these concepts and all these notions about uh, dynamics, and as soon as I mentioned it to him, he just kind of picked up on it and started talking back to me about it. And when um, I saw that he he actually used to run the CRMUG that was based out of the UK, mm -hmm. and I saw the event come up and contacted him, and he said, "Yeah, come along." Uh, and I went down there, and I for the first time saw this community, and saw him give like the opening address and give talks on. Um, you know dynamics as it was back then 2015 2016 days of like you know here's the business rule stuff here's like um virtual entities and stuff like that and i was captured like like his the way he sort of brought me in it was just kind of like captured by uh by like his passion to do this not as a career but as a lifestyle um and you know generating that community spirit so. I can I can so much resonate with what you tell about Adam because a few in few last few years I've taken up MCT also after being an MVP I do a lot of trainings those are the times and part of the work I really enjoy going to different kind of people and now of course across the globe uh, since last year I've been traveling I I decided that I will start traveling for trainings as well and it gives a different perspective it, it's something really I I enjoy sharing knowledge and making it a lifestyle yeah why not <laughs> yeah <laughs> and sometimes you are able to share uh, a lot more because you are into implementations as well right so yeah 
really helps. So, yeah. and then <clears throat> you get those queries which help you improve as well, and you keep growing. There is not a day in in the career that I have had with Dynamics, which is almost it's been a decade that you have to not learn. You have to learn something that you had last learned. You have to unlearn it and do something better all the time, right? Yeah. And that's what excites me. And I'm really happy to see what you guys are now doing, especially you are doing with Power Automate. And it gives us, I mean, you, you don't remember community in the times. I mean, for guys also who see so many video series and blogs now all over the place, it used to be a handful of 20, 20 or 25 bloggers. And yeah. there used to be two or three video series that you can learn from. So imagine what you have at disposal and just utilize the series Matt is doing here on Power Automate. Utilize the learnings he's sharing here on Power Mantra and grow yourself. And, and if you have any queries, you know where to point for Power Automate now. I, here is another person you can ask on Power Automate and I, I definitely know he'll be happy to answer you back on that, right? Definitely, definitely. I love to talk to people, I love to help. And thank you. Thank you for your time, Matt. Those are the questions I had. If you have anything else to share, definitely uh, let me know and I'll be we'll be happy to share it with our audience for Power Mantra. And I, I really hope we'll be meeting soon in near time, near future again and doing something more on awesome power platform or customer engagement. Yeah, definitely. Right. Thanks. Thanks for your time, Dipesh. That, that that's always fine, uh, Matt. So power 365 as usual, that's my mantra towards the end of a, a particular power mantra. So thank you for watching this people and I hope you are uh, getting to learn Power Automate with Matt series. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you had some great learnings with regard to Power Automate and Matt's journey. Power 365 as usual, if you have any of the needs on Dynamics 365, Power Platform, Azure or any other Microsoft related technology, if you have need for web development or app development, do get in touch with us here at Dynamics.